There are three types of factories in Hearts of Iron 4. Civilian factories, military factories, and dockyards. Civilian factories are used to build and repair constructions, including things like air bases, air installations, transportation infrastructure, fortifications, and other factories. Military factories are used to produce equipment, which is required in order to deploy your land and air forces. Dockyards produce your naval vessels, including surface ships and submarines. Let's start by looking at civilian factories. The construction window is where your civilian factories live. This top section shows you how many total civilian factories are available to you, and the bottom section indicates how they are currently being spent. Let's zoom in on that top section. This fraction indicates how many civilian factories are currently in use, followed by the total civilian factories available. This total is then broken down, showing how many of your total available factories are domestic and how many of them you are receiving via trade. In this shot, all 41 factories are in use, 40 of them are domestic, and one is imported. We'll go into trade later in this video. This bottom section details what your factories are currently producing. Note that you will never be able to use all of your civilian factories. Some will always be used to produce civilian goods. In this example, 12 are producing civilian goods. One is being traded away for resources, 15 are constructing a new civilian factory, and 13 are constructing a new military factory. These remaining slots indicate that there are two other military factories queued up to be constructed, but there are not any free civilian factories to currently work them. After the current two constructions are completed, these other two will slide up the queue, and the now available factories will begin to work on them. As you can see, only 15 civilian factories can be used on a single building. The other 13 in this example have rolled over to start working on the military factory. The only control you have over this process is to prioritize which order you want the building constructed. You cannot, for example, dedicate 10 to the first two buildings and 8 to the last one. The civilian goods here are basically the factories dedicated to keeping your civilian population happy. You can't feasibly use every single industry in your nation for war. Some of them have to be used to produce goods for your populace. The amount required to keep them happy depends on two things, your current economic law and your total number of civilian and military factories. In this example, France has early mobilization as their economic law. This requires 25% of their total civilian and military factories to be dedicated to consumer goods. They have 41 civilian factories and 6 military factories for a total of 47 factories. 47 times 25% equals 11.75, which is rounded up to 12. To understand the next section, you need to know how the map is carved up. Each of these very small areas is known as a province. When you order military units around, they move from province to province. Provinces are grouped into larger regions called states. Some constructions are built inside individual provinces, and some are built across entire states. Here, you can see the player clicking a number of provinces, and the game not only displays the province, but also a second highlight showing the state the province is in. In the bottom left corner, you can see information about the province and state contained together in one window. I'm going to combine the province and state window with the construction window for the purposes of explanation, but just know that these two windows are not normally seen at the same time. On the right of the construction window, you can see all the possible things that your civilian factories will construct. You can also see which of these buildings is already built inside a province or state on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen when you click on a province. These four buildings are known as state buildings. Infrastructure determines the supply throughput for a state and increases the speed and recovery rate of land units. Infrastructure can be built up to a maximum of level 10. Air bases allow you to place air units in them for operations in that area. Each level can support 200 aircraft. You can build air bases up to a maximum of level 10. Anti-air installations will damage enemy air units and reduce the damage inflicted by enemy strategic bombers, max level 5. Finally, radar stations detect enemy foes, especially enemy aircraft, max level 6. All four of these buildings are built at the state level. You build it once in a state and it covers the entire state. The next set of buildings are known as shared buildings. They're still built at the state level, but they share a limited number of slots. You can see these slots represented in the state and province window on the bottom left. 
The number of slots a state has is determined by its population, but these can be increased in small ways by research and national focuses. Now let's go through the types of buildings that can be placed into these slots. Military factories build your land and air military equipment. Civilian factories are what we're talking about right now. They build and repair all of these constructions when they're damaged by combat or enemy bombers. Naval dockyards build your naval units. Synthetic refineries grant you oil and rubber resources, but at the cost of using one of your precious shared slots. Rocket sites allow you to launch rockets once you have the technology, and nuclear reactors produce nuclear bombs once you have the requisite research completed. The last three buildings are all built inside individual provinces, and each can be built up to level 10. Naval bases function like air bases. They give your naval units a place to launch missions from. They also send and receive supplies and resources via convoys. Land forts reduce the attack of land invaders, and coastal forts do the same for naval invaders. The final button at the bottom here allows you to convert military to civilian factories, or vice versa. Next, let's move on to military factories, which live in the production window. Remember that in the division design video, we discussed how divisions have certain equipment requirements based on what battalions and companies they are composed of. This is the screen where you produce that equipment. Each horizontal slot here is a specific production line. You can add new lines anytime you want or change your existing lines. A production line can have from 1 to 15 military factories working on it at any given time. But unlike civilian factories, you are able to specify exactly how many military factories are assigned to each line. In this example, we see a production line for infantry equipment at maximum capacity using 15 factories. Below that is a line producing support equipment with only two factories. One main difference between these two lines can be seen here. This bar represents the production efficiency of the line. In past Hearts of Iron games, this was known as the gearing bonus. This is designed to model the real-life efficiency improvements that production lines gain over time. When you build a new factory and hire new workers, they will be inexperienced and make mistakes. As your workers gain experience with making this particular equipment, they figure out shortcuts and make less mistakes and produce more equipment in the same amount of time. Over time, this improves the production efficiency of the line to a certain maximum. The infantry equipment line at the top has been running for a long time and has reached maximum efficiency. The support equipment line has been running for a long time as well, but only recently had an additional factory added to it. The bar represents an average of all the factories on that particular line. Removing a factory from a line never has an effect on efficiency, but adding a new factory will require time for that factory to get to its full productivity. There are other ways a line can lose efficiency besides simply adding new factories to it. If you change a line from producing tanks to producing planes, it will drop all the way to the minimum 10% production efficiency. However, if you change out a line to a similar piece of equipment, you'll lose less efficiency. This will lead to certain difficult choices in the game. For example, let's say you unlock Panzer III tanks in 1938 and start a production line for them. By 1939, you've got enough army experience to build a nice variant of the Panzer III. Swapping out a production line for a variant of the same vehicle only reduces the efficiency a very small amount. But then in 1941, you finish developing the mighty Panzer IV. Swapping the Panzer III variant to the Panzer IV won't drop your efficiency completely, but it will drop it almost all the way down. Do you swap out the line, knowing that it will cause a significant decrease in tank output for a few months? Or do you start a new line of Panzer IVs using factories that were previously making, say, tactical bombers? This would preserve your tank production and let you slowly decommission the Panzer III line and convert it back over to tactical bombers. But what's more important? Tactical bombers or your tank production? These are the choices you face in Hearts of Iron IV. Let us pause for a moment to discuss how resources work in Hearts of Iron 4. There are six strategic resources in the game, including oil, rubber, steel, aluminum, tungsten, and chromium. Resources are located in various provinces throughout the world map. Whoever controls the province produces that resource. Remember that trade laws dictate how much of your own resources is available to you directly for military production, and how much must be available for export to the world market. 
Unlike previous Hearts of Iron games, you cannot stockpile resources. Instead, you convert the resources to equipment and stockpile that equipment for situations when you might need, say, more troops, or maybe fighting in bad weather has caused much of your equipment to fail and it needs to be replaced. Each type of equipment requires its own combination of resources. You can see in this example that Infantry Equipment 1 requires 2 steel per factory producing it. The production line has 15 factories, so it requires and is receiving 30 steel. The light tanks require 1 oil and 3 steel per factory and are currently receiving their full supply of resources. However, if we scroll down a bit, we can see that the convoys have a yellow bar here instead of a green one. This indicates that they are missing resources, and the red glow around the oil indicates which resource is missing. Resources are distributed to your production lines in a priority basis from top to bottom. If we wanted to prioritize our convoys, we could put them above the tanks, and then the tanks would be the ones missing the oil. Convoys require one oil and one steel per dockyard assigned to them. And while it has the full complement of steel available, only three total units of oil are available to the convoy production. This means that five of the dockyards are working at a penalty to their production speed. So how do you fix this? Well, the obvious way is to take those resources from your nearest neighbor. But let's assume you're not ready for that yet. Another solution is to trade your civilian factories for resources. First, you have to find a country with a surplus of the resource you want, who also has trade laws that put some of that surplus on the market. Then you must make sure that you have enough convoys available to import that resource. Finally, the target country must like you enough to trade with you. This works both ways, of course. Remember back when we took a look at our civilian factories? We only had 40 domestic factories, but we had 41 total available because another country was buying some of our surplus resources, and in exchange, we got one of their civilian factories. There is no way to refuse these trades except by closing your economy via trade law. These trades happen automatically and in the background. One moment you'll open your civilian construction panel and just be surprised that suddenly you have a few more factories available to you. The final factory type we're going to talk about is dockyards. They operate much the same as military factories, with the exception that they do not gain a production efficiency bonus and can only build naval vessels one at a time. That concludes our pre-release guide. Your next step should be to play through the tutorial and search the wiki whenever you're confused about something. If you enjoyed this series, keep an eye out on my channel. I'll be providing more detailed mechanics and strategy videos once the game is in my hands. Thanks for watching.